It's turning around, it's turning around 
The writer of Colossians says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Limitless gratitude. Let us pray. Holy oh, God, it is indeed turning around because you have turned it around. And you are turning it around. God, even when it doesn't look like what we think it ought to look like, you are working for us, in us, through us, to effect the change you would have in this world. Now, God, for this word that is to come forth in the preaching moment, let it line up with the word in the singing moment, and the word in the spoken moment, and the word in the greeting moment, and let it all combine, Lord, to be a sweet-smelling savor in your, in your nostrils. Lord, send your Holy Ghost power to continue to rest rule and abide with us. Let it do each of us with Holy Ghost power. Let the word come forth such as it has never come forth before, Lord, and bring us all on one accord. Consecrate us to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope, and our will be lost in love. Amen. Happy New Year. The beginning of a new year inspires many feelings and thoughts within us. Mm -hmm. New Year's resolutions have been made any promises and intentions to improve ourselves, to lose weight. How many of us on that keto diet? Anybody doing the Daniel fast? Yes. To make more money. To take more vacations, to stress less, yes. and so forth. These are uppermost in our minds. With the start of each new year, there is another opportunity to do better than we did last year. There is another chance to have more, to do more, to be more than we've ever been. And those are wonderful ways to look at our lives. After all, the only way to make real change is with real intention. The only way to make real change is with real intention. And we should want to live into all that God has in store for us. Too often we settle for things the way they are because we believe it is too difficult to effect positive change in our lives. But part of limitless living is knowing and believing that there are no limits on what God can do. Oh, somebody should have shouted right there. Somebody is a walking miracle in here today. The doctor said one thing, but the Lord said something else. There is no limit to what God can do. In and through us for the upbuilding of God's kingdom right here on earth. Limitless living permeates every facet of our lives. From our personal goals to our relationships to our vocations to the communal manifestation of God's glory, justice, and righteousness. Limitless living operates out of a mindset of abundance. We talked about an abundance mindset several months ago when we studied extravagant generosity from the five practices of fruitful congregation. Do you all remember that study? I hope you're still going back to that and reminding yourselves of the lessons that we've learned. Author Stephen Covey reminds us that there is a huge difference between an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset. The path that our lives take depends in part on the mindset that we adopt. We can choose either to view the world as abundant or scarce, but they cannot coexist. People with a scarcity mentality see life as only adding so much, as if there were only one pie out there. 
beyond our comfort zone. Who's ready to grow beyond their comfort zone? A person with an abundance mindset believes there's always more of everything in life. Whether that's money, relationships, resources, opportunities. Alternatively, someone with a scarcity mindset lives in fear that they are always going to lose their time and or their money. Because they believe that there will never be enough. They are in constant competition to stay on top for killing themselves on jobs that will replace them the day they kill over, trying to get ahead. I tell folks all the time, don't kill yourself trying to do something that is going to primarily benefit those outside of you. Because those same folk will come to the church, march around you, talk about how natural you look, and before the service is over, they will change the topic of conversation. You better listen to me what I say. A mindset of limitless living calls for us to trust in the assurance that God
by Michael Hyatt. Yes. Hyatt writes that, quote, gratitude has the potential to amplify everything good in our lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's true. Gratitude has the potential to amplify, make larger, make bigger, everything good in our lives. Yes. In fact, Hyatt says that there is a connection between gratitude and our ability to strive for important goals. Mm -hmm. He calls this connection the gratitude advantage. Yes. What is the gratitude advantage. First, gratitude makes us resilient in that it keeps us hopeful. You know what resilience is? Resilience is the ability to bounce back no matter what happens to you. Yes. And you need to have it to make it in this world. If everything that happens to you lays you low, you never will achieve anything. If every time somebody tells you no, you give up, you never will achieve it. If every
when we're grateful, we see different ways of attacking uh, problems that weren't there before. When we're grateful, we don't even see the problem as a problem, but an opportunity yeah. to watch the hand of God move. Right. Have you ever looked at your problems like that? This is an opportunity for me to exercise my faith and see what God going to do with this one right here. Yeah. The writer tells the church in Colossia that the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God the Father through him, whatever you do. It doesn't matter if you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or just
Church are 